Hey guys, Alec Bears Tech Tips once again. Uh, here at Simcoe Diving too, back in Barrie. Yeah, great, uh, great dive store, no question about it. And I wanted to take a minute because we've had a few calls about this, a few comments about long-term storage. I'm not going to be diving for a year. I'm not sure how people know that, but you know, it's quite possible. Uh, why, how do I do this? What do I do with my BC? I, you make sure, my, oh, they have lots of questions. How do I make sure that my equipment is going to be okay a year from now when I start diving again, or two years, or whatever? And uh, there are some things that you should do, no question about it. Few things can be more frustrating than having good gear. It fits, it works, it's good quality, you spend a lot of money on it, and you store it away in your dive bag down in the basement because you're not going to be diving for a while. And then you get a chance to go diving and you quick run down and pull it out and your buddies are waiting for you out in the driveway. And there's a problem. So let me give you a couple of tips, okay? Not all of this is in the book. Let's see what happens. Now, the gear I'm talking, there's all kinds of stuff. Dive lights, please take the batteries out. Sure, you're not one of those people that leaves batteries in, in, in anything. Cameras or dive lights or any device for more than six months. Take the batteries out. Absolutely, in incredibly important. Uh, uh, rinse it and clean it and so on. All that kind of stuff. I'm going to leave that up to you. Here are the, the uh, five items that require special attention. The tank and the regulator, which includes, of course, the, uh, the safe second and any low pressure hoses. Uh, any computer you have, whether it's mounted on the regulator system or wrist mounted. Uh, the BCD and your wetsuit. Okay, and we're going to deal with these in backwards order. We're going to start at the bottom and work up. Wetsuits. Now, this is kind of silly. Your wetsuit should be washed and dry and hanging on a hanger in the closet. Find some place in your, in your apartment, your condo, your house, wherever it is, the garage, wherever it happens to be. It doesn't matter the temperature or out of the sun, will it will be, it's indoors, any of that stuff. But it should be hanging up. If your good wetsuit, and decent wetsuits now are four or five, six hundred dollars. If your good wetsuit or dry suit, same thing, is folded up nice and neatly and stuffed in the bottom of your dye bag with all the other gear piled on top, what you're going to get a year from now, when you take out your wetsuit or dry suit, you're going to get a wetsuit and dry suit with lines on it where it was folded and marks on top, permanent marks from the stuff you laid on top. It's neoprene. You, usually it's made of neoprene or some other material. And if it's compressed for any length of time, it leaves a permanent indentation. So hang it up on a hanger, not a big deal. Uh, wash it carefully, rinse it, dry it, and hang it up on a hanger. It's just that simple. I leave that one pretty obvious. The buoyancy compensator, it's kind of the same. Buoyancy compensators are made of fabric too. So you can put them into a dive bag, but you ought not to put a lot of stuff on top of them. So the same story. And you know this. You know, if I say to people, what's the most important thing to make sure your gear lasts a long time? The answer is rinse. Rinse and, and dry it, yeah. So it's the same with your buoyancy compensator. Clean it. There actually are materials that you can use to clean the inside of a, uh, of a buoyancy compensator. There's one product called BC Life. Good idea. A couple of drops of, a um, couple of drops, not much. A couple of drops of dishwashing uh, uh, liquid and maybe a single drop of a chlorine-based cleaner on the inside. Fill it with water, rinse it all around, leave it, rinse it all around, tip up and down, rinse it two or three times, and then rinse all that out with fresh water. There's actually a device, we've talked about it, go back. Uh, Kevin, maybe you can put a link on There's a device that you can get that hooks right up to your, to your low pressure inflator on your BC, and then it connects to a, a, a faucet, a kitchen sink or a laundry tub sink. And that device is incredible because what it does, it not only puts water into the BC, which you can then dump out, and you can do that repeatedly until it's really clean inside, but it puts the water in through the power inflator. So that mechanism, which is stainless steel and has O-rings on it as you work it, that mechanism gets worked and gets fresh water flowing through it. That device, I forget what it's called now, Kevin, BC wash, something like that. But that device actually connects right to your BC inflator, right on there. And, it, and the hose, and it goes to, a, to a, a, a faucet connector. So you turn on the faucet, and then you press this button, right? And water, whoosh, but it's cleaning up this mechanism as well. This is mechanism is, is the only mechanical part on a BC, really. Steel and, and O-rings and so on. And there's no other way to rinse this really effectively. So that's the best thing to do, or, or figure some other way to get water in through that mechanism. Anyway, point is, uh, clean it, 
rinse it, blow it up, and let it dry for quite a while, several days or a week. And then pack it carefully into a bag without a bunch of stuff packed on top of it. So that's pretty easy too. Computer is also very easy. I suggest you take the computer to your dive store. Tell them, take the battery out. It's going to be uh, not used for a long, long time. Please take the battery out, rinse and clean my computer for me. And that's what they'll do. They'll take your computer, be it a, a wrist mount or, or a, a console mounted computer, and they'll, they'll check it. They'll take the battery out, and you want the battery taken out of the computer. Don't leave the battery in there. You've got two, two problems going to occur. Uh, the one is the battery goes dead. That's a nuisance. Or the worst is that the battery destroys the computer. Happens all the time. Okay, take it out. And then, and, and to put the plug back in, then just store this in a Ziploc bag until you're ready to go diving again. And then before you go diving, take it back to them again. Have them replace the battery. Now, if you are mechanically inclined and you have the instructions and you feel confident, you can do those things yourself. You can actually do them yourself. You can take the battery out carefully. I don't know if you want to store the battery for a year. Batteries are what? Ten bucks? Maybe get a new one and, and, and store the whole thing carefully. But take the battery out of the computer. That's most important. So we'll check that one off as well. Okay, now we come to the regulator and then finally the tank. The regulator is actually pretty easy. There's not much to do with the regulator. Again, rinse it carefully. The second stage is in particular. Make sure that you blow water right down through that second stage. <clears throat> Put the, the garden hose or your kitchen sink right into the mouthpiece. And you turn the pressure on. Don't push the perch button. We'll talk about that in a second. But have water going right down into the mouthpiece. Now, what will happen is you can't get up the hose. But it'll go down through the mouthpiece, it'll blah, 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 all around inside that second station, go squirting out through the exhaust, and it'll clean out all the stuff that's in there. What's in there? Well, there might be salt water, there could be a little bit of sand, there's almost bound to be some spit, some saliva from your mouth, or whatever you had to drink that day <laughs> after your last diet. You clean all that out of there, so the second stage is clean inside. The first stage, if you've been taking care of your regulator, should be okay. It should be dry in there. Filter should be clean and it should be dry. So it's really just the second stages, both second stages. You need to rinse really, really well. Hang it up to dry for a couple of days and store it. That's that simple. Okay? So the regulator is pretty simple as well. The tank is what I'd like to talk about. How do you store a tank safely? Well, if the tank is ready for its annual or five-year tests, take it in. Get it done. All right? Once the tank has had the, the hydrostatic test in the visual, it's good for a year. Get stickers on it and have it all set. But don't fill it. Yes, put some air in it. You guys know this. You divers, you know, you should always have air in the tank. The tank should never go empty. If the tank goes empty and you open the valve, whether you do it intentionally or accidentally, stuff can go in, into the valve. Bad stuff, dirt, water. I'm not sure what else could go in, but whatever else is laying around can go in. But there's a bit of air inside the tank, and the valve is open accidentally. Nothing can get in. You're going to hear the air hissing out, and quickly you close the valve. So just a, a bit of air, not a lot of air. You do not want the tank filled if it's long period storage. You don't want to fill for a very simple reason. It's high pressure. When you fill the tank, it stretches. It actually gets bigger. It stretches. That whole tank is under a lot of pressure, under a lot of stress. Everything being stressed to its limit, to its practical limit anyway. And it stays there. And now you put it away and you leave it there. Uh, under stress. All that time. Six months, a year, two years, whatever it happens to be. Not good. Not good for the metal. Not good for the O-rings. Not good for the tank. So, yes, I would suggest you get a visual and hydro if it needs it and put a bit of air into the tank, 100 PSI would be enough, 200, 300, not too bad. Put 100 PSI minimum, close the valve carefully, make sure it's not hissing, and then store it, and you're okay. So that's the single most important thing I would say about the tank, is always have some air, 100 PSI. No more than that. Not under full pressure all the time. So there's a quick reminder, guys. There's a quick list for you. Kevin will put a posting on that. Quick reminder for you, I think we've done this video before, a few of these items anyway, but here it is all in one nice simple thing. If you're not going to be diving for a period of time, let's say six months, a year or longer, depends, maybe you're, maybe you're going on an expedition or you're going to be getting a job uh, in, in the Sahara Desert <laughs> for a couple of years, but you want to save your dive gear, there's a few things to remember. Don't forget to lubricate the zippers on your dive bag, stuff like that. Oh, those are all common sense things, but these two or three things are important.
a bit of air in the tank, take the battery out of the computer, and hang your wetsuit up. Common mistakes, and it can lead to a lot of irritation. Anyway, I hope there's something in there of interest to you that helps you a little bit. And I hope you're not putting your gear away for long-term storage. Get out there and get diving. That's what it's all about. Talk to you again soon. Alec Pierce Scuba.